Swole Benji here. Today I'm going to talk to you about mistakes that all newbies make in Albion Online and what you can do to not make these mistakes and get ahead of the pack and be successful in this game. So let's get started right away. The very first one is to never, ever, ever skip the tutorial when you make your character. Make sure that this play tutorial button right here is checked and is yellow. Because if you don't, you will not have any starting gear, you won't have any starting specs, and most importantly, you will not have free three days of premium. That is super important to have, and just absolutely never, ever, ever skip the tutorial. During the tutorial, you will be able to upgrade your gear, and when you get that choice, you should wear one piece of leather, one piece of cloth, and one piece of plate, because when you fame it up, it will unlock all of the armor tiers, instead of locking you out later on. So what I mean by that is, if you look here at Soldier Helmet, you'll notice that it's made by bars. So that is plate, because it's made of metal. If you look at Mercenary Shoes, it's made of leather, which is leather. And then if you look at Scholar Sandals, it's made from cloth. So if your helmet is plate, then your chest should be leather or cloth, and then your boot should be whatever the last one is. So make sure that you wear all three pieces of armor, leather cloth and plate so that you can unlock it on the destiny board and have it ready when you leave tutorial island all right number three is to not leave tutorial island empty-handed a lot of people uh they, they when they leave tutorial island they don't have an inventory full of materials so let me just tell you right now these rough stones are by far the best thing you can leave with but they will take a while to gather you can get like almost a thousand of these in your inventory before you leave and if you look, you can split them into one, and it'll tell you the estimated market value, which is 60 each. And you can you can just run through this circle and get tons of them. Now, if you're in a rush, you can buy a bunch of mules, and you'll see that mules are worth about 5,000 each, but you can only carry like, like 4 to 10 of them or something. So it's really up to you, but do not leave Tutorial Island until you fill up your inventory with something valuable, because it will absolutely help out in the early game economy. All right, number four is do not waste your three days of premium. Whenever you get off of Tutorial Island, you'll be like in an, a quest area, and as soon as you turn in the quest, it will activate your three-day premium immediately. Make sure that you have free time to actually play the game, that you're not busy with school or work or any other il in real life obligations, uh, because those precious first three days of premium will absolutely make the big difference of how much you progress and you you want to progress as much as possible during those three days all right number five is understanding your reaver levels a lot of newbies don't understand what this is so let me give you the quick rundown okay when you press b you will open your destiny board and i know this looks confusing but just just follow me here you're going to go to the left where these little sword icons are and then you're going to go left to that and you will see your jerk you will see your reaver level as you play, this thing will increase as you kill mobs and as you do dungeons. Now, you will notice here that Journeyman Reaver allows you to deal damage to Tier 3 or higher creatures, and you will have more defense. And as you go up, it becomes Tier 4, and Tier 5, and Tier 6, and so on. So what this means is that until you unlock this Reaver level, you should not be in a Tier 5 zone, and you should not be in a Tier 4 zone if you don't have... Tier 4 unlocked. So, what is a Tier 4 zone? If you press Ilm and open your map... Oh, hold on, let me try again. If you press Ilm and open your map... Now, you're going to be starting out here in Step Cross, or one of the other starter zones, which is, if you notice, you'll see that it's a blue color, which means you can't be attacked by players, but you'll see the Roman numeral 2. This is a Tier 2 zone. If you go to adjacent to any of these, like, like this area, these are Tier 3 zones. You can also see it on the map here in the top right that the resources only go up to tier 3 so as long as your reaver level is tier 3 any mobs that you fight in this zone will be fine okay and then once you unlock tier 4 you can go up here you see the roman numeral 4 this is a tier 4 zone so you can deal you can deal plenty of damage to these mobs in these dungeons in tier 4 zones and then once you unlock tier 5 you'll see the v and then there's tier, this is a tier 7 zone, this is a tier 6 zone, and so on and so forth. So what you want to make sure that you're doing is that you're not going to a tier 4 zone until you unlock on your destiny board the tier 4 reaver, okay? Because if you don't, you will not deal enough damage to the mobs, and the mobs will absolutely hurt the heck out of you. This is to prevent players from just going and 
<laughs> straight from the tutorial into the in-game zones and just outplaying the mobs, okay? It's it's a, it's a little game mechanic. It's just a little bit of leveling. It, it, you can get tier 5 in the first couple hours of the game. It's very simple. I've got videos on my channel that explains it. Now, number 6 is not using optimal gear. And what I mean by optimal gear is gear that will allow you to clear dungeons extremely quickly. There are so many tutorials out there. If you go to, like, Reddit, you will get so much wrong information. And even people say that I give wrong information, but let, hear me out, okay? So when you're doing a dungeon, in especially a lower tier dungeon like tier 4 or tier 5, you do not need sustain. You do not need healing. All you need is damage because... The mobs will not hurt you very much, and if you do tons of damage, you can kill them before they can kill you, and you can dodge their attacks and just blow them up, and if you are killing very quickly, that means you are looting chests quickly. So here's how gear works, okay? For those that have never played Albion Online, you have cloth, leather, and plate, okay? When you wear cloth, this is a cloth robe, you will see here that it increases your physical attack bonus, your magic attack bonus, by a huge percentage, right? And it, this particular armor has an ability that increases your damage even more. As a new player, you combine this with a, with a high damage weapon, which you can play whatever weapon you want, but not all weapons are created equal. There are some weapons in this game that clear dungeons incredibly fast, and there are other weapons that will take you forever to clear a dungeon in, okay? I have guides on my channel, you, I have over 200 videos if you're curious, but the point is, is that as a new player, you want to be wearing cloth so that you can clear dungeons faster. Now, you may be thinking, what about cloth helmets and boots? Those do not really raise your damage unless they have an active ability that does so. Like, for instance, this helmet is a leather helmet. You will notice that um, it, it does have a small bonus of 1.5%. If I look at a cloth helmet... Uh, that is... No, that's also... Yeah, okay. Bah. Cloth helmet, also 1.5%. Like, your, your helmet and your boots will not really be boosting your damage much unless you use these active abilities. Like, for instance, this one increases your damage by 20%, which you can find a combo that will optimally clear, or you can just check out videos on my channel. I've, I've got over 200 videos, guys. But the point is, is that you want to use an optimal, fast-clearing build you, as a newbie and in lower tier zones, you don't need sustain. You don't need to be wearing leather armor that heals you because you don't need to be healed because the enemies are so easy to kill and they blow up so quickly that there's no reason to jank your damage, okay? Like you'll see here, this is a leather armor and it only increases damage by 20%. So you're losing a lot of efficiency if you wear this. Sure, you can heal yourself, but you don't need to heal yourself. The, the dungeons are too easy, and you should focus mostly on optimizing your clear speed, and that is how you're going to level up quickly and also build your early fortune. Number seven is not doing your expedition dailies, okay? So every day, you can come to this blue portal in town called the Expedition Master, all right? And this is a really good source of money if you're new. You click the portal, and you go to this one right here, Adept's Individual Expedition Tier 4. This is the best one to do, because this Tier 4 Royal Sigil sells for more than the Tier 5, okay? And it's faster. You can clear it faster. This is going to give you some nice silver. It's going to give you about 5,000 silver. It only takes, once you've done this a bunch, you can clear this in like three minutes. So in three minutes, you're going to get 5,000 silver, and you're going to get this Royal Sigil worth 44,000 silver. If you really want to, like, min-max your money, you will make multiple characters and do them on those multiple characters as a new player because this is amazing money, okay? You can do this every single day, okay? It's a daily, so make sure that you're doing it. On the topic of dailies is also the arena dailies. Now, once you have tier, like, 4.1 gear, you can start doing arena. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking arena is like a big deal, like in World of Warcraft arenas, like that's huge in-game thing with like tons of high tier gear. That, that, that is not the case in Albion Online, all right? Arena is meant for newer players. It limits the power down to 4.1. So if you click this little scroll at the top of your screen here, uh, you'll see that it has an arena button. You click arena, you go to solo queue, 
and look at the rewards. You can get three of these a day. These arena sigils, you get three of these every time you win. So that's 18,000. And most importantly, you get a 10,000 silver bag. So that, that's like, what, 30, 40, almost 50,000 silver. That is huge for a, a new player. But also, you get these expert tomes of insight and these give 20,000 combat fame this is one of the faster ways to level up as a newbie because you won't have the gear or the clear speed to really match the amount of combat fame that you get from these tomes okay and for those who don't know when you read a tome every piece of equipment that you are wearing will gain fame and this also goes towards your reaver level and your journeyman and all that fun stuff so just queue up for arena Arena matches take about 15 minutes. It's totally worth it as a new. Make sure you're doing your your arena dailies. They they're a lot of fun sometimes. Some most of the time they're one-sided stomps. Don't be discouraged if you see someone in arena with very high tier gear. They will be nerfed down in power to your level. It, it scales downward. Okay. All you need is tier 4.1 gear, which you may not know what that is yet, but I'm gonna explain in the next segment. All right, next up is not upgrading gear. A lot of newbies, they run around in Tier 2 and Tier 3 gear. That That is not where the game begins. The game begins at Tier 4 because that introduces the enchantment system. So let's just go uh, real quick. I'm just going to go to Armor, Cloth, Shoes, and I'm going to go to Tier 3. Okay, you got your Tier 3 shoes. They can't be enchanted or empowered beyond that. They That is as strong as they will ever get. But once you hit Tier 4... You'll notice they have these little slots, these little sockets, right? So, at this point, you can go to enchantment, and you can go to point one, and this is generally where you will be able to clear tier five, tier six. I can clear tier eight dungeons in 4.1. Like, I don't need to upgrade beyond this, and... <laughs> guys, upgrade your gear to 4.1, all of it. Your weapon, your armor, your helmet, your boots, your cape as soon as you can okay this is where the game begins this is where your power level begins and then after that what i recommend is upgrading your weapons as you can afford them to tier 4 like 4.2 or 4.3 and your chest armor you don't need to upgrade your helmet or your boots really your chest armor is going to give you the majority of your health and your weapon is going to give you the majority of your damage so you don't need to really upgrade anything else that much and once you hit tier 5, if you want to, you can, you know, increase it, but the costs do get a little high. But I, as you do dungeons, you really, really, really should upgrade your gear. Don't just sit in 4.1 the entire time, you know, spend some of that money. The great thing is, is that every upgrade that you buy in this game, you can sell back to the market. So let's say I buy a 6.3 uh, crossbow, right? This thing is 700,000 silver, which if you've been paying attention so far you'll notice that uh you know that that's quite a lot of dailies right but once i'm done with this weapon i can just put it back on the market and get my money back so it's like i'm renting the weapon until i can use a stronger weapon of sorts okay does that make sense to you guys all right number 10 is not joining or making a guild this one's actually quite important to do my recommendation and the way that I believe that people should play is that they should make their own guild. So to do that, I can't really show you on this character, but you would press G and then you would go into the menu and you would create a guild. And the reason you would create a guild is because everything that you do generates challenge points. And when you generate challenge points, you can level up a guild, which will then give you a resource called Siphoned Energy. And you can then take that siphoned energy and you can sell it. So let me explain real quick. All right. So here, my guild that I made has generated 540 siphoned energy in the last season. So this energy is worth 2.69 million silver. All right. So just be, just me playing the game, I earned extra silver just by doing dungeons and doing PvP and doing other things. Because everything you do generates challenge points, which will level up your guild, which will give you siphon energy, which you can sell to the market and make huge amounts of money. Now, the alternative is to join a guild, and when you join a guild, you will have access to the dangerous black zones, alright, at a cost of, like, taxation and maybe a little bit of uh, labor where you have to go fight in their wars and stuff. If you want to do that, that's fine. Like, the, the most popular one in the game is Red Tree Enclave. 
all right? So everyone joins this guild called Arch, and then they have this entire zone where they are mostly safe. You're, you're, you're never full, entirely safe, but you are mostly safe, and you can do Tier 8 dungeons, which are the in-game dungeons, and get lots of fame, and maybe make some friends. You know, uh, if you want to make friends in this game, like, it's very important to, to do so. So some people will say that the siphon energy that you earn being a solo in your own guild is not worth the friendships that you're missing out on, and that's totally fine. But another thing, too, that I want to press on about, when you make your own guild, you get your own guild island. So check this out. This is my guild island. I can build houses on here, which means I can build laborers. Now, laborers are a whole different subject, but it's basically free money because you grow these characters that will help crafters out, and you can sell them on the market just by playing the game, as you normally would, you're just doing dungeons, so you're compounding your earnings, alright? I'm not going to go into laborers in this video because it's kind of more of an advanced topic. I've got videos on my channel that explain laborers. Just click on my channel and, and search laborer and, and you'll see if you want to learn it. But you should absolutely either join a guild or create a guild as soon as you can. Now, this is, a f this is one of the most fatal mistakes that newbies make, all right? So what they do is they start enjoying the game. Maybe they spend some real money on the game by buying gold, and then they go buy a whole bunch of expensive gear and mounts. So check this out. The gear that I'm currently wearing is worth 28 million silver because this mount is like 17 million, and these are all very expensive pieces of, of equipment, right? Now, as an, if I was a newbie, I would be like, well, I can just take my super good gear and go into the black zone and farm high-tier dungeons. But when you do that, you are risking your entire net worth. You should not ever, ever bring this type of gear out into a dangerous zone, especially by yourself, because other players will kill you and take it. And then you will be back to square one, where you will be completely broke with no gear, and <laughs> you, you don't want to risk expensive gear you can you can risk cheap gear you can take a cheap gear set out into the black zone if you want but i have seen so so many newbies that will just take their entire net worth all their earnings and everything that they own and they will take it out into a red or a black zone and they will get killed and then they will quit the game because they literally lost everything that is such a huge gamble and you should never ever do that next up is stacking premium rewards now You've probably burned through your three days of premium, and that's fine, and you're getting a lot of silver so that you can afford premium, because having premium is absolutely worth it in this game. It pretty much almost doubles everything, all your earnings, your, your fame, your treasure, your loot. If you blow up other players and kill other players, less of their stuff will trash if you have premium active. Uh, true story. Now, one thing that people have been not doing properly is stacking premium rewards. So what you want to do is as you play through the month, you want to unlock all of these chests and you want to unlock the mount by playing the game and earning challenge points. But if you wait until the end of the month to activate premium, not only can you get all of these rewards, but you can also, let me just claim that real quick, you can also get the next month's rewards. So I am filming this in September, so if I was to activate premium towards the end of September and have, you know, all the rewards, I can also collect October's rewards, which is this spectral bat, right? But at the same time, maybe you want to hold off on your premium so that you can wait for November and December because, well, this bat's only worth really 400000 but this lizard is worth $1.6 And then if I stack from November to December, then I get a husky worth 777000 which is really, really good. All right? So you absolutely want to plan out your premium and stack the rewards. Now, if you, like, say you activated premium at the start of September, so like September 1st, well, your premium will run until September 31st because it's 30 days, and you will only get the combat mule and the four chests, right? So you want to make sure that you activate premium at the end of the month because you can have these ready to be collected, and if you activate premium at the end of the month, like I said, you get double the rewards, okay? So make sure you're stacking that. Number 13 is not faction flagging. If you're doing anything in a yellow zone, or even a red zone to be honest, you should almost always be faction flagged because it is free money that you're leaving on the table. Alright, 
Now, the thing with faction flagging is that you, you're going to need a little bit of gear and a little bit of combat fame before you can do it as a newbie. But you just go to the little faction vendor in whatever city. Uh, in this case, Bridgewatch is right here. And you click flag, and it's going to put a little icon next to your name. And, and everything that you do is going to earn faction warfare points, all right? Which you can come to this vendor, and you can spend the points, like, on Beast Hearts. Every 3,000 points that I earn on a Beast Heart is it's basically like 44,000 silver. If you like fame, you can buy these chests for 9,000 and you'll get you won't you'll get about 20,000 silver in the chest, but you're going to get a bunch of these fame tomes, the tier 4 varieties that give you 10,000 each. You're going to you're going to average 7 tomes per chest, which is amazing for faming up and getting stronger in this game. Also, it's one of the in-game grinds. Like you want to you absolutely want to rank up your faction so you can uh, you know, unlock these cool titles. Like, I'm about to become Miramadon, right? Uh, I'm currently Desert Viper. I don't know. That's kind of cool. But at the same time, as you rank up, you can buy things like baby animals once you get it, your island set up. And and a Terror Bird, which is a mount. It's a very good mount, I believe. I have videos on my channel that explains it. So, you want to be stacking as many things as possible. So, if, if you're running around doing dungeons or gathering and you, you are not faction flagged, you are playing the game wrong, and you are missing out. Number 14, <laughs> not using focus. This is a huge one. This is for people that have gotten premium, all right? Every day, your character will generate something called focus, 10,000 of it, okay? So if you if you press I and you click this little arrow, you'll see, that you'll see your focus. You'll notice that my character has zero focus. He doesn't have premium active, but you take this focus... And you can, you can use it in so many ways to just make free money. All right? It's mostly like a crafting thing, okay? But uh, let me just show you a quick example. I am a potion crafter. So let's go to a potion crafting station, right? And so I can click on a, on a potion here. And then I can click on focus. And what that's going to do is give me a higher resource return rate. Of course, it doesn't show it because I don't have any focus to actually use. But this resource return rate, instead of 15%, would become like 42%. Which means that if I take 8 of these burdock, and I, ha and I turn my focus on, I'm going to get 42% of 8 back every time I craft. Which is just free money. It makes crafting cheaper. This is going to, like, this is the number one way in the game to make money is to spend focus. I have several alt characters that have premium active, and all I do is I log in and I spend their focus and it makes me millions and millions of silver in minutes. And I'm not kidding. So you need to be spending your focus. It caps out at 30,000, okay? That's three days. Uh, hopefully you can get to a computer in three days. Sometimes you're sick or maybe you're on vacation or something. But essentially, never let it cap out at 30,000. You need to be spending your focus on just anything. Just refining or crafting furniture even. Just, just make sure that you're spending it. Number 15. <laughs> Sorry, I had, to, I had to meme it, guys. Not using gathering gear. I see so many people that run around, and they will be, like, chopping wood and mining stone and what have you, but they won't equip any gathering gear. Let me just give you a quick rundown on gathering gear, okay? When you put it on, it's going to increase the amount of resources that you get by a pretty good amount, and because it increases the resources that you receive, you will also be leveling your gathering faster. Now, from tier 4 to tier 8 is a huge difference, okay? Uh, once you can equip tier 8 gathering gear, you will notice a massive, massive improvement on how much items that you can gather per hour compared to when you were in tier 4. So when you are out gathering, you need to be wearing a full gathering set. No exceptions. Do not, do not, you, you do not need combat gear. If you are a skinner, you have skinning poison on your armor, which will do the work for you. You absolutely do not need combat gear unless you're doing some high-level Avalonian stuff, in which case you're not going to be watching a newbie video anyway. And on that topic... I really recommend the Avalonian items if you are not going into the red or black zones, okay? Because the amount of gathering yield you receive from these is absolutely worth the repair build. Don't listen to people saying that using Avalonian tools costs too much to repair because they do not. It massively, massively increases your gathering yield. Look at this, tier 8 Avalonian 
20%. That means for every five trees I chop, I get a freebie, okay? Uh, it's It really adds up, especially when you're chopping trees at, you know, light freaking speed, okay? So make sure that you are using gathering gear for whatever gathering that you want to do. I can't believe I have to tell people this. Number 16 is not using food and potions. I know that sounds simple. All right, but hear me out. Okay, when I started playing this game, I was I incredibly stingy. I am an incredibly penny-pinching minimalist person, and I was like, you know what? I can do dungeons. I don't even need food. I don't need potions. Let me tell you that food in this game, it, it, it's a little different than, like, say, World of Warcraft, where you just eat the food and you get a... And you know, you know to, to like get a temp buff the buffs that you get in this game from food are Amazing, okay, look at this one. This is called roast pork. This gives you lifesteal This gives you almost 10% lifesteal on all the damage you deal. All right now This one is a beef stew. It gives you 13.5% more damage. That's insane But most people when doing dungeons will use something like a cabbage soup, which I guess I ran out of Well, I, I, I guess I'm out of cabbage soup, but essentially Using like a fish or a soup will give you a ton of healing between mob pools. It's absolutely very vital that you use foods. Uh, you can use foods when gathering as well. You can. I don't think I have any in my inventory, but a pork pie will increase your gathering yield. I just talked about gathering in number 15, but you really should utilize food buffs. Just get on the market, check them out, pick the one that you think is right for you, and potions... You know, you don't have to throw poison potions at every boss in a dungeon. I think that's kind of a waste of money. But you should carry some healing potions just in case you lag or you get hit by a big attack. And and you should, like, like think about it like this. I'm using full tier 8.3 gear if I'm doing a group dungeon. What's cheaper? One of these potions, which I'm a potion crafter, by the way, cost me 4000 right? A $4,000 potion or a $133,000 repair bill, okay? So <laughs> keep that in, well, I'm saying dollars, I mean silver, but you get the point. Potions will save your life. Food will make your life easier. Don't neglect them, okay? Use them. Number 17 is not using your farmland because once you have premium, you have access to your own personal island, which I filled it with houses so I could fill it with laborers. But the point is, is that you should absolutely use your farmland for something, okay? I have a video on my channel that shows how you can profit using your farmland, using tier 3 crops, even without having to water them, okay? But you should absolutely use your farmland because it's free money. There's no reason that you should never not be using your farms unless you're insanely super crazy rich to the point where you just don't want to do farm stuff anymore, okay? But as a newbie, you absolutely want to be taking advantage of your farmland because it's free money and more silver <laughs> for you is better. So make sure that you are using your farmland. Number 18 won't apply to everyone, but I really wanted to point this out there for people uh, like myself, okay? So you need to be very, very careful with chat, all right? Never ever say anything, even a preschool insult. Never, never open chat and, and and talk crap. Do not ever insult anyone, even if you call them like like a like like a, just something a, a middle schooler or a preschooler would say. Even if it's completely work safe, even if it's completely innocent, like don't don't call them like a buster or a dweeb or a, a pipsqueak or any of those silly names. Okay absolutely avoid any kind of transgressions or uh, any anything that might upset someone in chat because you will want to have access to chat for faction fighting and hardcore expeditions and organizing dungeons and if you get muted in chat you can't do any of that you cannot play with other people you cannot talk to them and the game masters in this game are extremely extremely aggro and they will mute you for calling someone a hot dog or insulting uh, a popular Korean K-pop group. You just don't want to do it. Do not mess with chat. Don't just don't even test them. This game is extremely heavily overly moderated. And if you lose your chat powers, it makes life miserable. It makes life very hard in this game. So be absolutely very careful with chat. I know it's tempting to get in there and, and rile people up about some sort of thing that's going on in the world, 
Uh, also, the majority, even though this is English chat, the, the vast majority speak other languages and they can be kind of sensitive, so do not upset them because they will try to ruin your life. There was a, a YouTuber who uh, talked crap in the chat about people trading real money for silver and they just hacked his YouTube o over it. Just, just something in the chat. Like, you want to be absolutely careful with the chat, guys. You don't want to lose your chat privileges, so just, just a word of caution. Number 20, this one's for newbies, not experienced or rich players. Do not use a satchel. Okay, so this is called a satchel of, of insight. And it's going to dramatically increase your combat fame gained when you kill mobs and do dungeons. However, it's going to take lots and lots of silver from you to the point where you might not even be able to afford premium if you put one of these bad boys on. I know it's very tempting to wear this so that you can level faster, but it, it is an extremely huge silver drain if you watched any of my videos, you'll, you'll note that I can spend 1 to 2 million silver in 30 minutes to an hour of grinding and not ever make that back from the loot that I get from the dungeons. To me, like, I have sources of money and I have ways of generating silver very quickly. So to me, it's worth it to wear. But as a newbie who is struggling to afford premium, who does not have a lot of silver or investments or high tier gear, you do not want to use a satchel. It is a trap. Do not put one of these on. Use a regular bag. All right, number 21. This is pretty much just a tip and not so much uh, like something new, but compound your earnings. So let's say you do dungeons so that you can level up and get some loot to sell. Because you're doing dungeons, you should be using generalist journals to level and sell laborers on your personal island and your guild island. And you should use an optimal build to min-max your earnings so that you are clearing as fast as possible and earning as much uh, fame and loot per hour as possible. You should be faction flagged while you do this so that you have more earnings. And you should also be in your own guild so that you have more earnings. So, if you combine all of those, it makes dungeons heavily worth it, okay? So if you're not compounding your earnings as a newbie, you are not generating as much silver as you potentially could and therefore will fall behind other players. You won't level as quickly and you won't have as much fortune as someone who's doing all of the aforementioned items. All right, guys, that's it for the tips. Those are 21 things that you can do as a newbie to not make mistakes and to get ahead of the pack and all that fun stuff. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. I know I haven't made a, a video for newbies in a while. I'm Soul Benji. Thanks for watching. As always, be a bro, stay swole, leave a like and a comment. You gotta do both. When you do both, it is an algorithm cheat code. It is a YouTube combo. It absolutely helps out. And go ahead and subscribe if you haven't. I make daily videos, or at least I try to. Can't always do it, but hopefully this helped you out. Hopefully you can get some value out of this. Share it with your friends. Share it on Discord if you'd like. I'm out of here. I will see you in the next video. Take care, lads.